Hello everyone, I am Ron and I am the Game Design Instructor for the Academy of Entertainment Arts over at Dixie Hollins High School. If you are one of my students, it's Mr. Flowers to you, and welcome to this video tutorial. Alright, so we are back, and this tutorial we're going to go over making the controller that's going to, uh, or the control handle for our foot. Okay, so at the moment we already have everything that we need for the one foot. If you haven't made the uh, right foot like IK setup just yet, don't worry too much about that. We're going to finish this one up and then you can always go back and watch over uh, both videos to kind of see how it's done. All right, I'm going to hit this little button here. This is the one that brings us back into our perspective. And I'm going to create some sort of object to be a handle that I can click on very easily to access my foot. It can be anything you want. You can make it a box or a sphere. Um, what a lot of developers or designers do is they use curves. So up here under our curves slash surfaces, I'm just going to grab a circle. And a lot of designers actually make their own. So you have like this little draw curve kind of pencil tool. You could use this if you really want to, to draw your own unique, you know, curved shape. A lot of them draw like arrows, you know, for the direction that something's moving and so on and so forth. You could do that if you really want to. I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, I'm just going to use a circle for now. Try to keep it as simple as possible. And I will drag out a circle. Good enough. Now, a, uh, a curve is really a NURB surface, and we haven't really dealt with NURBs too much, but that's fine. It'll work for, for what we need. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snap this to the foot bone here. So I'm going to hold down the V key and just drag this to the little foot bone. Just make sure it snaps to the bone and it's not on the grid. I'm going to come down, take a look, and it is indeed on the bone, which is joy. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to reshape this so it looks like a foot. So I'm going to hit R to bring up my scale tool. And I'm just going to grab this, taper it in. That way it's roughly the size and shape of the foot. And I will just move it back some. That way, no matter where I am on the model, so if I'm working, I can grab it from pretty much anywhere and not have to worry about grabbing the model. So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. A little bit of fine-tuning. It doesn't have to be perfect just so long as you can grab it. Okay. And with this kind of set up and in place, I'm just going to make sure it is snapped to this uh, center grid line here. Use this line right there. I'm just going to snap it by holding the X, and there we go. And the reason I'm just snapping it is so, so that it's precise. If you look over here, you can see that we are 15 in the X. And I'm going to control D to make another one of these. And I'm going to snap that over here. So holding X, I will snap this over to there. Now the reason I just put those centrally on the grid is once I move the pivot point, it's going to be a little bit weird. I'm going to grab both of these, and then I'm going to a side view. Um, if you can't bring up a side view, just click on the little window here to bring up a four view and then you'll have your side view. All right. So what I want to do here is I want to make sure that my handle is below the heel. And the reason for that is we can set up a control that whenever this curved surface is in contact with, say, the floor of the grid, it will prevent the foot from moving below that. And that will help us when we're walking so we don't have to do too many tweaks. It should hit the floor and start doing some bending on its own. All right. With that in place, we can go ahead and move the pivot points. So I'm going to select my left curve here, and I'm going to hit insert on the keyboard, and that'll bring up this pivot point moving option. I'm going to snap this to the ankle bone. So I'm going to hold down the V key and snap it to the ankle bone. Just make sure it's on there and not like floating somewhere else. And mine happens to be on there. Okay, sweet. I'm going to do that to the right foot as well while I'm here. So grab that, um, hold down the V key and snap that bone. Sweet. And I will go ahead and name my left one up here and names. I'm going to go left, 
and it's going to be foot underscore CTRL for control. And I'll go ahead and name the other one right foot control. So R underscore foot C CTRL. With those created, I'm going to go back into my two view right here, little two view. And I will bring up my hypergraph. So come down to the little uh, drop down. Or there's two of them. Top one is the top screen, bottom one's the bottom screen. So I'm going to grab the bottom one and go to hypergraph, hyper, or hierarchy. And there we are. You can see that we have our left ankle group or left foot group here. Here's my left foot control. And there's my right foot control. I'm going to hit insert on the keyboard to turn off this, um, the moving widget for the pivot point. So I'm back to normal. And now with my left foot control selected, I'm going to go ahead and select my left ankle turn group. Okay. With both of these selected, we're going to do what's called a constraint. So what a constraint does is it takes two objects and it says one object is going to be the controller of that object. So I'm going to grab up here, make sure we're in rigging, and then come over to constraint. And we're going to look for two different constraints. We're going to look for the point constraint, this one, and then the orient constraint. Um, we're not doing a parent. Okay, so just make sure, because they're right next to each other, make sure you're on point constraint. Go ahead and hit that. And what the point constraint will do is wherever this object moves to, it affects the translation. See how that turned blue? So wherever we translate this to, it'll follow. And then if I do the next one, constraint, go down to orient. And now we have a rotation constraint. So what this does, if I grab this and then I pull it, you can see that the foot follows and it points and then if I try to rotate it it rotates and that's pretty much it and what's kinda cool is we can zero out these controls and whenever we need to access it we can always just hit zero so right now it's back to normal I haven't done anything to it I'm gonna select this and typically you do this before you uh, set your constraints up, but it's okay. So long as it's back to where it was, it should be fine. Come up to Modify, and then go down to Freeze Transformations. And what that'll do is it'll zero out whatever's in here. So this position is now zero. So if I ever move this off, and I'm like, oh no, i got to get back to normal, I can come in here and just hit zero, and it goes back to normal. I'm going to go ahead and do that for my other foot here. I'm going to grab this handle and I'm going to come up to modify and do a quick freeze. So freeze transformations. And there we go. So that is already zeroed out. So whenever I get ready to do the other angle, it'll be be ready for me. Okay, so that's the first part of it. The next part is a little bit more tricky. Uh, we're going to add a few extra attributes and those attributes we're going to use are going to control the uh, rolling and turning of the foot and the toes. So up here on our channel box, go up to edit, come down to add attribute. I hit that. <clears throat> what this allows us to do is it allows us to create new attributes for this controller. Right here we have these basic ones here. We have translate, rotation, scale, and visibility. These are attributes. Well we're going to add a couple to this list. So here we have long name and I'm going to call this and I'm going to call this L underscore toe underscore lift. So this attribute will control the lifting of our toe. So our toes pulling up or down will be the lift of our toe. And then we're going to come down to where it says data type, make sure it's set to float. So this will give us a value in between you know, one and whatever with some sort of decimal point afterward. And then scalar type just means we can go positive or negative, up or down. And then down here, we have numerical attribute properties. And this is going to be the minimum, maximum value of our attribute. You can put whatever you want in here. You can do 0 to 100. You can do 0 to 1. You can do negative 1 to negative 5. Um, I prefer negative um, whole values to another negative whole value. So uh, negative 10 or negative 100 to a negative to a positive 10 or a positive 100 is usually what I do. But I'm going to do a negative 10 for the minimum 
and then I'm going to do a positive 10 for the maximum. And I'm going to hit add. And you can see right here on our channel box, we have a new one that says L toe lift. So that's our left toe lift attribute. And whenever we want to uh, move our toe, we're going to use this attribute and then we're going to keyframe that so we can uh, animate it. We're going to add two more. We're going to do, we're going to do L underscore toe underscore roll Y. So this is going to allow our foot to uh, roll in the Y axis. And again, I'm going to set this to a float value and then a scalar and then a negative 10 and a positive 10. We hit add. So that's going to be the Y value for uh, rolling the foot. I'll do L underscore toe underscore roll Z. So this is going to be rolling the toe in the Z axis. Again, we're going to do a float, a scalar, and then minus 10, and then positive 10. And hit add. We can go ahead and close this now, but we do have our three new attributes. Right now, they don't do anything. We have to do a we have to make a connection for it. To do that, we need to set what's called a driven key. And a driven key basically just allows one object to control another uh, through its attribute properties here. So I'm going to change my rigging tab to animation, and then I'm going to come over to key, and under key I'm going to come down to set driven key. And I'll hit set. In the set driven key window, we have two options. We have a the first one is the driver, and the second is the driven. So the driver is the one that is controlling, and then the driven is the thing we're trying to control. Okay? So the person in the car and then the car. That's the way you can kind of think of that. So our driver for our attribute is going to be our left foot control. I'm going to go ahead and select my left foot control. And then down here, I'm going to say load driver. And that's going to put my left foot control up here. And then the thing that I want to drive, the thing that I want to control, is going to be my left toe lift group. So in my little box down here, I look for my left toe lift group. So we have our left ankle, left toe roll, left foot, and we have our left toe lift group. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit load driven, and you'll see there are left toe lift group is here. So my driver, the thing that's controlling the group, is my left foot control. And the thing that I'm trying to control is my left toe lift group. Okay, a little bit confusing, but just make sure that you have the correct ones here. And then the thing we need to do is select which attribute we want to control the attribute of the other. So right now we're going to be doing the lift of our toe. So I'm going to select that. So make sure I have my uh, left foot control selected. And I grab my left toe lift. The current value is set to zero. I'm going to come down to my left toe lift. And the value I'm going to be adjusting is its rotation in the X. All right, so make sure those are good. Left foot control, left toe lift left toe lift group, and then rotation X, and then hit key. And you'll see that the left toe lift group attribute has a red at zero. That means there's a key uh, set. And then I'm going to come back up to my left foot control, select my left toe lift, and now I'm going to set a new value. So I'm going to say positive 10, and hit enter. I'm going to come down to my driven, select my left toe lift, select my X again, and now I'm going to put a value in X. So I'm going to have this do, uh, we'll say, 50. And you can see here my toe has moved. I'm going to come down a little bit so you can see. So there's my toe bending downward. All right, with this set, I'm going to go ahead and hit key. And you'll see that this does turn red, so if I kind of click off, it does turn red, so you can see it's keyed at that value. And you can see that it is keyed there, it is red. All right, so I'm going to grab my left foot control. I'm going to grab my left toe lift. Inside my attributes here, I'm going to set this to a negative 10. And then I'm going to go down to my driven, grab my left toe lift group, select the X value. 
select the x value, and then set this to a negative 50. So now I have it where the toe is lifting up. Okay. And I will hit key. And now that is keyed in. So if I grab my left foot controller here, and I come down to my left toe lift group, and if I just middle mouse click out here, you can see me dragging, and I can drag, and that moves the foot up or down, which is kind of cool. And if I type in zero, that should go back to normal. Awesome. So now I'm going to do the next two controls. I'm going to grab my left foot control, come down to my left toe roll Y, and then I'm going to go to my left toe lift, and come down to my left toe rotate Y. I'm going to key that at zero. You can see a key came in. Go back up to my left foot control, grab my left toe roll Y, I'm going to set the positive 10 value, grab my left foot control, rotate Y, and I'm going to give this a positive 50. And you can see the foot trying to turn, and then I will hit the key. So that one's keyed. Go back up to left foot control, left toe roll Y. I'm going to put in the next value at negative 10. Grab my left toe lift group, the rotate Y. And I do this at negative 50. And then I'll hit key. And now the Y should be set up. So if I grab the roll Y and then I do a middle mouse click and drag, you can see it pivoting there. Okay, I'm going to set that back to zero. And now let's grab our last one. So left foot control, left toe roll Z, left toe lift group, and then the rotate Z. I'm going to key this at zero. So key. And now I'm going to go back up, grab my left foot control, left toe roll Z. I'm going to set my first value at positive 10. Left to lift group, rotate Z. I'm going to set this at positive 50, key it, and I go back and do the other. So left foot control, left toe roll Z, negative 10, left toe lift group, rotate Z. And I'm going to put a negative 50. And I'm going to go ahead and key that value. And with all those set, I should be able to control it. So let's go ahead and close this now. I'm going to select my controller here. And you can see that my values are here. And I can zero them out. And the foot goes back to normal. If I want to lift the toe, I can type in a value. And toe lifts, or it goes down. If I want to roll it, I can turn it. And if I want to roll it the other way, I can roll it the other way. And then if I twist it all mangled like it's broken like that, then I can type in zero on all three of these, and boom, they're all back to normal. Okay, so that's going to end this video. Go ahead and do this for the, uh, the right foot, and then we'll take care of the next part of the video, which is fixing the knee. And I'll show you what we're going to look at. So... If I grab my left foot control and I move it up, you can see my leg bends, but my knee does this weird sideways thing. And we can fix that pretty easily by setting up a, um, another controller for it, but we'll take care of that in the next video, okay? And I will see you guys next time.